The Republic Press says court dismisses Empire Builders case against top kings over Bortiman lands. And also COVID-19 vaccination, 450,000 people still waiting for their second dose. Man stabs wife to death over divorce. Banner headlines, Sputnik V deal, Ajima Menu under fire for not thinking properly in parenthesis. Uh, not honors Brian a champion for promoting education and supporting teachers. And Ghana procures 177,600 Johnson and Johnson vaccine uh, facilitated by UNICEF. Somebody says before we have brought a bill. The Fida newspaper, Ajima Menu didn't lie to committee over Sputnik V payments, Afenio marking, and uh, Ghana receives 1,777,600 uh, um, uh, doses of Johnson and Johnson single shot vaccines. Also, Public debt CD management has been one of the best, according to Dr. Bomia. Yeah, that's what he says. How was your CD to dollar exchange rate this morning? Two projects costing 13.34 million Ghana cities. Uh, commissioned as President Kufuado also inspects ongoing program, uh, projects. Parliament charges of Riata to recover 2.8 um, million dollars from undelivered Sputnik V vaccines. That's per, according to uh, per, uh, the probe, the bipartisan probe that was done, uh, headed by a finger marking them. Daily Guide, NDC goes after E.T. Mensa and uh, Blair retains GMPC, Alu San for GSTEC. Also, seven boards for public varsities inaugurated. We shall support you for Dagban development, uh, Iana Tunana, and Sputnik deal was a mess, according to Kweku Baku, my senior uh, on this side. The Daily Statement, Greater Accra Regional Minister needs to support, uh, needs the support of all. And let's consolidate Dagban peace. President Ekufuadu, Vice President extols government handling of exchange rate. And Kwabena Ejipong uh, eulogizes Al Haji Malik Yakubu and others. The Ghanaian Observer, Yana Lords Ekufuadu for peace in Dagban. You know, the president uh, took a tour of the northern region. Sputnik V vaccine probe. Health Minister was honest with. Uh, committee, according to opinion marking, 1D1F, Akufuado commissions 73 million Ghana City Savalugu Rice Factory and Technology Solutions Centre. Also, NDC plans to resort to violence and intimidation for 2024 elections. I don't know why they chose Sam George's photo, but impending a sing not by election will be dress rehearsal. Whoever has this information must be speaking to the police, not be publishing it. Creating more jobs, entrepreneurial opportunities for the youth remains our priority, according to Vice President Dr. Bormia. The Supreme Newspaper, you brought peace to Dagon. Uh, Yana appreciates President Kufado. EC whistleblower stands trial while power theft um, thief left off the hook. Song or Adar youth petition Paramount Chiefs and DCEs. Also, Gaek Enclave is family land, not to land. Odoin to his family uh, leader there. The Ghanaian Times, what does it say? Parliament suspends action on ad hoc committee report on Sputnik V purchase. But committee chair says minister was candid. That's a finger marking them. Ghana takes delivery of 1,000 uh, and 77, 600 doses of Johnson & Johnson single shot. Also, President opened 7.3 million factory uh, to process 28 tons of 2.8 tons, I beg your pardon, of rice in Savalugu, North region. Three pastors grabbed over death of woman at a prayer camp. The Daily Graphic, we're building consensus and appointment of MMTCs, according to the President. Supply of Sputnik V vaccine, finance minister ordered to retrieve 16.3 million uh, Ghana CDs from supplier. Also, jobs come hits labor ministry, hundreds for victim uh, there. Finally, the B and FT, minus question why they should pay energy recovery levy, and players argue that they shouldn't pay for debt they didn't contribute to. Also, new Coco initiative already attracting memberships across Africa. Coco Board CEO, fiscal consolidation commitment makes investors uh, in financial market. IEA calls for greater clarity regarding energy and financial uh, sector debts. My guest this morning, uh, lawyer Eduji Tamaklo. He is a member of the NDC's legal team 
and also their communication team. And uh, lawyer Andrew Ejapa Mesa, he is the Deputy Minister for Energy, also Member of Parliament for Second D. Uh, there, gentlemen, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I'm good. Well, well, been a while. Yeah. My uh, brother in power. Since the last got... time that I came here, you yeah. were not a host. Uh, yes, yes, I was yes. privileged yes. to have been uh, hosted by Bella. Yes, you like the family in touch. Uh, I remember yeah, yeah. Papa Jay. He, he was privileged. He was privileged. <laughs> How long have you been looking for that opportunity? Oh, of course. I mean, uh, uh, she has bring some refreshing, you know, uh, uh, sense to She was not punching so you. Father Baku should be uh, unlike, happy with you. Unlike, unlike. <laughs> but you see, uh, let me say good morning to uh, yourself and my good friend. And right. Energy, to our viewers. Uh, when you are reading the headlines, something mm -hmm. caught me that you said. That Which one? Facilitated by UNICEF before somebody brings us a bill. Well, that's a very unfortunate statement. Is it? Because you see, is it? If you go on the UNICEF website, mm -hmm. the assertion that the vaccines were facilitated by UNICEF mm -hmm. itself is false. Oh, so UNICEF got it wrong putting it on its no, Facebook page. No, UNICEF said that mm -hmm. it facilitated the transportation. Okay. And let me read it for you. Today, and this is UNICEF Ghana. Okay. They are verified Facebook account. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Today, the government of Ghana received 177,600. Mm. Yes, I'm reading the story. All right. Doses of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the African Vaccine Acquisition Trust mechanism established by the au mm -hmm. and supported by the africa import export bank right the africa cdc mm -hmm. and the world bank, world bank yeah in total mm -hmm. 400 million doses of johnson and johnson will be made available to the au in the coming months mm -hmm. unicef mm -hmm. facilitated the transportation of the vaccines okay. to ghana what's that's the, the only role that it played. what's the point now so no but so if you say before somebody brings us a bill mm. what, what really do you want to put out that's your problem. Yeah, that's my problem. Okay, it's okay. We understand your problem. Let's make progress. <laughs> it's, it's, we should be no, fair. No, I okay? think that, senior, within the, a These more, kinds of statements... No, 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 I, 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 I no, 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 no. I understood what you said. Yeah. Within a more localized context, mm. to mean that if African Union mm -hmm. is basically, quote-unquote, the purchaser through the African uh, uh, bank facility, mm -hmm. then... It should, we should not hear tomorrow saying that government of Ghana had mm. paid to so and so amount. That's how mm. the context in which I understood what you said. I've said what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not here to fight. By the way, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Me, 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 Bobo knows me, I won't fight it. I saw, I saw my senior BP going yeah, about Bobo, it as Bobo, Bobo is my senior. He knows I won't fight it. Hey, hey, Mr. John. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to Kaira in the Volta region. Uh, let's start from there. There's a school project that has been done and dusted. The children are learning on the veranda. Armstrong Gold Alogba has been chasing that. Let's look at that briefly and then we'll get into smoothing issues. The new Kaira DA Basic School was established in 2000. It took close to 20 years before the school was given a facelift. The renovation has been completed since 2020, but the project is yet to be handed over to the school authorities. This has compelled the school authorities to make do with the corridors. Okay, clap for yourself. Yes, because sometimes if water rain, water is falling on us. We are not learning. We want to enter the classroom and We are not happy. There was no blackboard. And we want to enter our classroom to learn. For children in nursery, even when the new blog is handed over, they will have to continue to study under trees since they do not have a classroom. According to the teachers, the situation has affected the students' performance with many of them dropping out of school. Because the class is combined, is I'm finding it difficult because class two, their way of understanding is quite higher than the class one. But I'm forced to teach both of them the same thing at all the time. This is how it has been since we came back from Corona break. We've been outside. We have only one board to talk of that we share. So when the class one and two teacher, that is the teacher combined those two classes, is teaching, that means the rest of us have to be doing 
some oral lessons with them. Head teacher of the school, Daniel Jubim, said all efforts to get the keys handed over to them have not been successful. After I come with, I was transferred to the school. So I came to meet the situation. Okay, the community, they went to the DC to, to go and ask why they are not opening the door. They came back to tell me that the DC he said he'll come. By the time the, the DC gave them, has a lapse and he has not come. So teaching and learning is, is not going on effectively. It's a matter of fact, on the corridor. Until the contractor hands over the keys to the school authorities, these people will continue to use this corridor as their classrooms. Joseph Armstrong, Gold and Lebe, TV3, New Cairo. I would have to put all these things. So that's the sad story there. Project is done as you saw it. I showed you some other one in, in the Bono region. We finished the project. The children are sitting on Veranda Bobo. You are a member of parliament. I'm sure that if I dig into your, your area as well, you find projects that have been done, but somebody is waiting to come and cut ribbon. Why do we do this to ourselves? Well, I guess that uh, it's part of the process that goes into the commissioning mm. and handover. Uh, it's unfortunate that in some instances, projects that are completed get delayed mm. in the handing over process because if the contractor doesn't hand over in a certain formal manner, mm -hmm. then the payment, final certification, the payment of his uh, uh, award that is due him mm -hmm. uh, may not be forthcoming mm -hmm. uh, because nobody uh, would, would, would be in a position to certify the work that you've done and, uh, based on which the, the payments that are due mm -hmm. uh, should be made. And so, yes, by all means, Expedition ought to be uh, the key word here. Right. I think that the district assemblies, who largely are responsible for uh, overseeing some of these projects mm -hmm. in the district, ought to be up and doing, and uh, especially when facilities have been completed, mm -hmm. uh, they expedite the handing over process so that it can be put to the use of the communities right. for which these things are, are, are done. Right. Edigi, this is in your region, your home region, yes. uh, uh, Kaira. It's, it's sad. I mean, when it rains. The, the people get uh, what do you call it they they have to they have to actually close from school as soon as it starts raining and it's sad um, I think there is a broader conversation about this mm. and not only the issue of uh, this particular community mm -hmm. I strongly believe that we've gotten to the the point that we should be looking at this issue of the broader policy issue of schools under trees. Mm. I mean, and, and I say this respectfully, I mean, I have had the benefit of going through some of this. I mm. remember those days in Nkwanta and others. In terms of building the confidence of kids, mm -hmm. these things are very critical. Where they start their school, among other things, mm -hmm. it goes into building their self-esteem, among other things. So I think that the old policy, and it used to be a greater thing under the NDC administration, mm -hmm. this whole idea of schools under trees, mm -hmm. to eradicate them. Let's go back to that conversation. Now, to the extent that this one is done, mm -hmm. and it's becoming difficult to have it handed over to authorities, for the kids to make use of it, mm. it does not speak well of us. Right. It's like someone is, quote unquote, waiting for some showmanship. Mm. The best show, the best dedication, or kind of demonstration of the goodwill or whatever from this project is the kids using it. Mm -hmm. And maybe coming to meet them, they're singing a very good song of blah, blah, blah. For you, mm. I think that that's even more better way of dealing it. So uh, whoever it is, whether the district director of education within that community, it is not late mm. this morning. Just pick your, uh, is it, uh, is it uh, scissors or Scissors something? and go and cut and the ribbon. Just go and cut the ribbon mm. so they can make it up. Okay, Dr. Edichu, good morning to you. I know that you are passionate about education. I know that you have uh, started a project to get hundred young people in Bosom Tree, for example, to become engineers, and you have started the process. 
these kids at Tyra are looking up to you this morning. They don't want to be studying on verandas because when BEC is due, they will be sitting for the same exam that the kids at Christ the King, St. Teresa, Prince of Peace will be sitting for. They don't need to be shortchanged where two classes are combined. They are sharing one makeshift blackboard and then after some time they move the blackboard to another side. What happens within those two, three hours where others are taking lessons? This is not cool. It doesn't represent us at all. And this is not... Uh, uh, it doesn't speak well of a nation that says it's committed to education. So, sir, good morning to you. Please get your team to Kaira and fix this one. Fix it. The teachers can do nothing about it, even if they fix themselves. You have to fix this. Good morning. Let's talk about uh, Sputnik V. But you, you are in Parliament. You have, you have risen, and you would return in October. Why was Parliament unable to... Uh, make a verdict or a decision on the Minister for Health amidst all the calls, the revelations that have come uh, and, and some, some shocking details that the committee itself brought to the fore in its report. Why was Parliament unable to make a decision on the Minister, whether to let him stay or to go? But there was no consideration before Parliament mm. on whether the Minister ought to stay or to go. Mm. That question was just not there. Okay. Uh, the committee's report that had been submitted mm -hmm. contained no such recommendation. Indeed, it was the minority chief whip mm -hmm. who, during his debate, sought to, after the report had been laid and seconded, the motion moved and seconded, sought in his debate, contribution mm. to the debate, to amend the report mm. by suggesting that the report be amended to include uh, questions of removal of the minister and session of the minister. Mm -hmm. uh, completely uh, unfounded when you come to the rules of parliament. No such procedure as just if you intend for uh, a, a report to be amended. Mm -hmm. It is at the stage of moving the motion that any such mm -hmm. amendment uh, can, can be taken. In any event, uh, Honorable Muntaka was not a member of the committee. Right. The members of the committee included members from the NPP and the NDC sites. Mm -hmm. They sat together uh, in a public hearing. Uh, many people monitored the events of the hearing. Mm -hmm. and they then put together a report signed by the chairman and the ranking member, mm -hmm. uh, vice chairman of the committee, uh, uh, Honorable Lakando. Mm -hmm. They who had first-hand interactions with the minister, who mm -hmm. had first-hand interaction with the documentation, did not find it necessary <coughs> to ask the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana as part of their report for the removal of the uh, minister. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was strange that the minority chief whip in contributing to the motion then sought to amend the motion uh, uh, and include things that 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 really uh, 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 so but you see johnny it's not unusual okay for parliament to conduct a debate mm -hmm. and for the speaker to defer a decision that is putting the question to a later date mm. And so what transpired with respect to the adoption of the report, mm -hmm. separate from the, uh, I don't want to use words, <laughs> uh, 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 or if you like, legalist, uh, <laughs> the attempt <laughs> by Honorable Muntaka to smuggle in something that was alien, unknown mm. to the report. Uh, are two different questions that, uh, you know, uh, of course, it's the attempt to smuggle in the uh, amendment mm -hmm. of, 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 of the report that is dominating the headlines. Are and, you... and so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried because, you see, yes, I had Kuku Bako's comments right. last Saturday because I was a co-panelist. That he should do the honorable thing and resign. Uh, I, what does that mean? I don't know. You tell me. What, what yeah, did you understand course. by what you said? Well, that's his perspective of the issues that transpired. Are you happy with the Minister for Health? 
with his conduct, uh, not consulting cabinet, parliament, see, the PPA board. I listened and to doing him. with Stephens what he was not mandated to do. I listened Are you to happy him. with him? I, I need you to Johnny, answer this for me first and then we can. I listened to him. Okay. Yes, he breached certain statutory provisions. There's and no I, doubt. And I'm asking you, are you happy with him? No, hold on. I didn't happy with him or not. Is he material? But I listened to him. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself whether all the steps that he took were willful, mm. with intent, were reckless mm. to occasion some loss to the Republic of Ghana. And I'm satisfied that no, he was not willful. Mm -hmm. He was not reckless. His actions were not intended to cause loss to the Republic of Ghana. And so I can appreciate exactly what it is. Means that, that, he did. Means that if you're putting a fix, you do the you same thing. Look, circumstances that people are confronted with, mm -hmm. in any event, the rules does not bar taking an action and subsequently going to the public procurement authority for ratification which of that section do. 90. But uh, is there a time frame within which that step ought to have been taken? Okay? Mm. Such that you would go and say that, well, uh, you could take this action. You've taken it. You were supposed to go for ratification mm. within a certain time frame that you've also breached. So you cannot pass a judgment on that. Can you imagine what but, will happen but, if, but if everybody, hold on, hold everybody, on, hold on. That's with, what power, said. everybody no. with power decides to, to do that? Can you imagine what will happen? Context is always important. Mm. Context. We were in the middle of the second wave. Mm -hmm. Sputnik and or other vaccines were just not available. And so if some third party had made some offer hmm. which other countries are also looking for and in his attempt to beat the other competitors looking for the same person then takes these actions mm -hmm. I, I hope you are not making a, an excuse for the minister who is a member, making, a member of cabinet look, I listen he's a member of, said. he's a member of cabinet Bobo and he's a member of he, the tax force. He couldn't have gone to. You, you see, he couldn't have gone to cabinet. He could have spoken with the tax force. This look, is a man who chaired a public accounts committee. We watched him on TV. We saw how he grilled people who had sometimes even used money of assemblies. To okay, so was he not? So hold on for me. So we have seen a man sometimes grill people who work in an assembly had used assembly funds to go and paint the building of an assembly to make it look nice but without approval and they have been dealt with this was the man who he had chaired such meetings he and could, so, he and, could so have done he, otherwise. and so if he is confronted with a certain situation mm. life and death saving lives and livelihoods ensuring that the vaccines are made available for the people of ghana mm. and within those circumstances takes steps that is not tainted with corruption mm. That is not tainted with any wrongdoing. But the exigencies of time mm. makes him do what he did, obviously with intent to ratify as appropriate. I will be charitable with him. Whatever we paid for has not come in in full. So what is the effect of this charitability that, have, you, that you want because, to... Because... Uh, mm. There were delays that, of course, I'm sure that if we had acted probably a little earlier. Like I said, these vaccines are in short supply. Mm. Our friends in Europe and other places are keeping it. In fact, India stopped the export of the AstraZeneca vaccines that we all took right. when it came around the first time. Right. Other people needed it. So if you contracted for you supposed to pay some monies and you delay ah somebody else will pick it off the shelf and you have to wait that probably accounts for why we did not get the vessels from the source that the contract was executed and so mm. 
from the committee's report, the ministry has written, of course, the contract has been terminated because there has been delays mm -hmm. in the delivery period that they themselves contracted. And they have indicated that when they get a formal notice of termination, they're going to refund the monies that we've paid to them, to the Republic of Ghana. Should the, minister, so, yes, should the minister continue to be in office? This is a, the question on many minds in Ghana it, now. It, should he or should he not? Well, that's for him to take, a decision for him to take. Would you advise him to? I would not. Why not? Because, like I said, I listen to him. Okay. And I can be empathetic with respect to his situation at the time that he took these actions. Okay. Eduji, so the committee has met. They have made a decision. Bobo has just explained to us why... Uh, or if you like the circumstances under which the question was deferred and it is in line with parliamentary practice and procedure. What are your thoughts uh, about the report that you saw? Uh, I, I, was, I was quite, mind the mic, please. I was, I was quite uh, startled when I saw the report, the, the detail in there, but what do you say? Okay, uh, <clears throat> so once again, good morning to our viewers. Um, I'm particularly disappointed with the position taken by Marlene Senior this mm -hmm. morning. Once you become a minister, you take an oath of office. Mm -hmm. In the oath of office is your pledge, the oath you have taken to respect the laws of this republic. Mm -hmm. The constitution relative to Article 11 of the 1992 Constitution mm -hmm. is the supreme law of this country. The second are the statutes and laws passed by Parliament. Mm. Incidentally, the minister who is under the microscope now mm. was in Parliament when the Public Procurement Act was first passed. Mm -hmm. Like you have indicated, he had worked as the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he has been a deputy minister of finance before. He has been the substantive minister of health for some time now. Mm -hmm. And so, if you want someone who should know better, nobody is in is better place mm -hmm. than uh, the Honorable Ajman Menu. Mm -hmm. So it's important that in having this conversation, we look at his relative experience, quote unquote, to what he now claims to be a confused minister of state. Mm. Now, when a parliamentary committee made up of both majority and minority mm. are unanimous in their finding as a fact that our minister who has sworn an oath to defend the laws of this country had willfully breached the 1992 constitution relative to article 1815 and not only that has in the most reckless manner breached the public procurement act it lies not in the mouth of anybody mm. to say that the minister dealt with us with candor we are, we are not in normal times. That's, that was the minister's, see, that, one of his defenses. You see, you see. That people, people were getting see, sick. Under, under, and he thought that he had to act. the Public Procurement Act, mm. there are a lot of opportunities. One, sole sourcing approval, which allows in such emergency situation mm -hmm. to meet the board and indicate to the board that relative to the emergency situation and others, and the fact that we could get this particular thing from only one source. Mm. Give me sole sourcing approval and the board will do that ASAP. Two, we do know, and this government has demonstrated mm. what is called the use of the certificate of urgency. Whenever they needed parliamentary approval or endorsement for any transaction, this government has done it. How? In Prove fact, it. I recall. Prove it. I recall, mm -hmm. immediately this government came to power. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that they did, because they needed the appointment of MMDC, right. the, the, those NDC appointed government appointees on the assembly. Mm -hmm. They quickly went to parliament under a certificate of agency, amended the Local Governance Act to ensure that was removed. 
You thought that, that was the motive? No, not, no, not I'm, to get, I'm saying, not to no, get no, running. I'm just saying that that too, okay. the certificate of agency, mm. is a tool that is available if we know that there is a need for these processes. But you see, if you read the committee report, the committee comes to the irresistible conclusion mm. that the Constitution 1992 was breached in the most violent manner. Not only that, the Public Procurement very, Act... Very strong words Yes, there. the Public Procurement Act mm. was equally breached. And you see, why do you think we are in this situation? Tell me. Our minister, mm. who quote-unquote is learned within the spheres of public financial management, ought to know better. Now, so for him to take this decision, and, and, and you see, the lack of candor, mm. even at the committee level, is startling. He was, he, was, he was candid. I mean, he said he didn't go to parliament, he didn't no, no, go to no, no. cabinet. Those are, those are, that, that, I mean, how, how candid see, can somebody no, get? You see, the issue of you not going to parliament, it is binary. It is either zero or one. There is no middle ground. Mm. So you either did or you did not. So what else could he have said? The issue of going for public procurement, mm. it is binary, zero or one. You cannot say there is a middle ground, I mm. did or I did not. Mm. It is not possible. But I'm saying that if you have a government mm -hmm. headed by President Akufuado, who prosecuted mm -hmm. in the quality grain matter, where, for instance, the fact that loans were taken mm -hmm. without parliamentary approval mm -hmm. was a basis for the judge to infer willfulness, recklessness, because the judge then said, look, under Article 181, loans for the purposes contracted by government mm -hmm. ought to have received parliamentary approval. And the lack of it, those ministers under Jerry Rawlings were put in prison. It did not end there. As we speak, President Akufuado, through his attorney general, had prosecuted former members of the NCA board. But Today, boy. as we speak, three of them are languishing in prison on the basis that they purchased the Pegasus without a PPA approval, mm. among other charges. So I am saying that the conduct of President Akufuado mm. relative to prosecuting former appointees of the Mahama administration mm -hmm. for alleged breaches of the Public Procurement Act. It does not lie in the mouth of any member of the MPP to suggest, even remotely, that a willful breach of that act can mm -hmm. be justified. Well, Mr. Afenio Marking, Lawyer Afenio Marking, who was the chairman of the Bipartisan Committee and also the majority leader of and, CHA Mesa Bozo, have, have said that uh, when Mr. Ajimamenu says, to the best of his knowledge, no money had been paid, uh, it should have been put, it should be put in a certain context. And they, that they, didn't they lie. Even, look, look, there cannot even be any context to that conversation. When was the contract entered into? Somewhere in March. Right. By April, payments had been effected. When did the committee, the committee sitting, when did it happen? Mm. Somewhere in July. So as at the time the minister appeared before the parliamentary committee. He knew as a fact that payments had been done. And you know what? The further evidence of this lack of candor is that the minister now writes a letter before the committee report came out mm. suggesting that it had just come to his attention that payments had been done. Who does this? And you are telling us that the minister had demonstrated candor. There was no... Look... I mean, he basically lied under oath. That's dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. And I am saying that my, my lady senior, who is an MP, should be worried that a committee of parliament, an individual minister, can appear before that committee <laughs> and lie to the committee. You have no empathy. Bobo says he no, will be empathetic see, because of the you. circumstances and what the minister was doing. Now, he in, says, in, he in, says in, for example, on, that hold on, let me tell there's, no, see, there's, no, there's no willful, no, I'll, I'll the willful direction to cause financial loss in the state. You see, in quality grade, mm. in quality grade, one of the defense put forward by the accused persons, that look, look, we are desirous of getting the right farm in Aveyeme. 
we have not benefited in any material respect mm -hmm. from the transaction. Mm -hmm. They just said no. Motive is irrelevant. It matters not whether you have benefited or not. Mm. What is clear is that you took a decision to contract a loan mm. for A, B, C, D, and a certain loss had been occasioned. So whether or not you had motive, mm. you were motivated, it's immaterial. What, what, what should the minister be doing no, now? No, no, Bobo no, says, no, you, Bobo no, says that's, for, that's for you the see, minister see, Joe, to decide. The president see, has not no taken person, a decision. I am just telling you that, mm. you see, we are dealing with a context. Under President Akufuado, mm -hmm. former board members of the NCA were hauled by the Attorney General of President Akufuado. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when he appeared before the Ghana Bar Association Conference in Takrade, among the things that he showed mm -hmm. as evidence of him fighting corruption is the prosecution of these individuals. Mm -hmm. What was the basis of the prosecution? That Pegasus was purchased. In fact, under cross examination, it was admitted that the national security coordinator then, when he so rest in peace, Joshua Tremi, mm. went to NSO Group Factory in Israel just to be sure that this Pegasus came from there. It was established under cross examination. It was also established that the price of the Pegasus was never inflated. However, they just said there was the need for them to go to PPA. In effect, what are you saying? For approval. In effect, what are the, you saying? What I'm saying is that for the facts established before the committee, mm. the Honorable Kweku Ajeman Menu decision to procure the Sputnik V mm. without recourse to the public procurement authority mm -hmm. infringes upon the laws of this country. I recall, and I acted as counsel in the NCA prosecution, we suggested to the judge mm -hmm. that Section 90 of the Act allows for what we call ratification. Whereupon a committee is put in place, okay. the committee will investigate the transaction. Mm -hmm. And so, relative to the Pegasus of the, uh, uh, the, the purchase of the Pegasus, mm -hmm. we have not even gotten to the point where an indication can be put forward mm -hmm. that they decided to breach the Procurement Act. Okay. The judge said no, mm -hmm. the act is clear in terms, and that to the extent mm -hmm. that you have done. You now, in the case of you're, 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 you're not making a point on, uh, on the question I asked you. Bobo says, let the minister make a decision, but he will choose to be see, empathetic. See, see, see. The question of Clearly, the, you have no empathy. No, the issue be, is not because, about, because see, of the laws that I, you say I, have been I, 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 So what are you seeking? As we speak, mm. why are we asking for a refund? Tell me. What because do you know? in the NCA matter, President Akufado could have asked that let's go for a refund from NSO. This was parliament. No, no, I'm so, just saying. So you can't, no, no, no. Can't uh, but the president. president is supposed to know. Right. That's his minister of health, not you. He's not even the head of a board or an institution. He's a cabinet minister, for Christ's sake. And so for him to have decided to do this procurement in them. But you see, this minister has a pension for doing this. Oh. You remember the snake vaccine? Yeah, the snake Go and there. look at the procurement processes involving that purchase. So this is not a minister that you can easily say that, look, he did not know. Even though you and I agree that ignorance of the law may not be an excuse. Okay. So thank you. in terms of Th conduct, thank you. Wrap up. Uh, let, let Bobo have had decided to let Bobo have a, Bobo. it should not be suggested even remotely mm. that a minister who has admitted that he had breached the nineteen ninety two constitution, breached the public procurement act, and even lied under oath should just be excused on the basis of empathy. Mm. Bobo, you are in parliament. So if somebody takes an oath and, and gives wrong information, I, I don't want to say lie because that, that would be too strong. What happens? Of course, the consequences are grave. Which are? No doubt. Which are? Of course, uh, that's perjury right there. Mm. And uh, you and I know that uh, perjury is a criminal offense in this country. Mm. But question is, has it been established that the minister perjured himself mm. when he appeared before the committee? He's, Obviously not. He said, to the best of his knowledge... Thank you very much. Uh, no payment had been made. Thank you. Okay. To the best of his knowledge. Okay. 
What does it mean? How does payment happen at the ministry without the tacit Why, the knowledge chief, the, and approval? The chief director, who is the head of the administration of the ministry, cannot write letters to the finance ministry based on a contract that has been executed for payment to be made. And the minister will not be aware. Oh, it's possible. Really? Absolutely. It happens in your ministry. Well, it hasn't happened in my ministry. Okay. As I speak. Okay. But it will not be surprising to me at all that that administrative process takes place and the minister is not because obviously they've executed a contract mm. and he knows the terms of the contract that they're supposed to make some payment. But as to whether actual payment had been made at the time that he appeared before the committee, it is possible that he may not know. Given the time frame, given the time frame that when when the offer was made, consideration was made, acceptance of course, was done that's why when, before he appeared. That's why the when he checked post that sitting and it was clear to him that some payment had been made. He then wrote a letter to the committee indicating that, yes, following my appearance before you, I have checked mm. and then gotten to know that, indeed, some payment has been made. I see. How does that amount to perjury? I don't know. Well, uh, you see, oh, please. I sat here quietly. Eduji, allow him, please. Allow, allow Bobo to go on. So, Bobo, you now, Eduji is trying to do uh, a comparison between the... I was coming there. The, 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 uh, the, what do you call it? That, that's project. exactly where I was going. Okay, let's go then. Comparison. Right. Was this a criminal trial? Oh, please. <laughs> please. So, how do you compare apples with oranges? Indeed, it was your side, the NDC minority, that called for this probe. Right. The speaker granted it. Hmm. Set up the committee. The committee did a public hearing. Surprising. You sit here and condemn the judgment that was delivered in the NCA case. But I'm not aware that you filed an appeal, have you? We have. You filed an appeal? Yes. Oh, okay. So let's wait for the outcome of the appeal. So we all know whether the Court of Appeal we agree, will agree with your arguments no, or, or not. But, there's a subsisting but, judgment. That's the point I'm making. Which, which is to the effect that your client, having been given the opportunity to be heard, yes. was found guilty. Yes. And so the justification for his action that you are sitting here preaching, what does it mean? That if the same person who prosecuted but, but, them, but, but, but if the same person who prosecuted who? The NCA the You see, that's, that's the difficulty that I have with some of the statements that we make. Mm. <laughs> because you are seeking to personalize it. Okay. Oh, wow. That is the How? president that took the action. Mm. To prosecute. What, what does that mean? The prosecutions are... Do you know Article 88? Uh, why is the, it the, in the... The Attorney General prosecution? does prosecutions. Yes, not, on behalf not, of the president. It, it, you, you see, but, but go ahead. how is it, it, it on behalf of the president? <laughs> he does so on behalf of the Republic of Ghana. But of course, it's convenient to, as usual, go the political line and it becomes an MPP NDC manta and shelve the real issues. Don't you think that Look, the, the committee the has made recommendations? Right. Okay. Mm. Which is clear that, as far as I'm concerned, ought to guide public officials in the performance of their functions mm. that regardless of the exigencies of the time still go to parliament for the approval in any event this international business transaction that he makes reference to mm -hmm. separate from the loan of course they are all provided for under 181 mm -hmm. at what point should parliamentary approval be obtained before execution of the agreement or after I take the view that it's only when you execute the agreement that you send to parliament for approval. And so, the, by virtue of the fact that the minister has executed the agreement, but has not yet mm. sent it to parliament, really, that's the basis for your asking for the prosecution? How does the, gov how does the government feel about the public backlash, the demands for the head of the minister for health, uh, and his continual stay in office. How does the government feel about it? That well, speaking you... speaking for myself, mm. I think it's completely unfair. Why so? Yes, of course. I've told you on countless occasions mm. here mm. that I listened to the minister during the entirety of the proceedings. Was he woeful? Was he reckless? Mm. Did he have an intent to cause financial loss to the state? Mm. In any event, was the committee's own report that was made up by the NPP and the NDC mm. find him to have conducted any corrupt act? 
His counter. I'm asking. No, 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 Eduji, yes. Eduji, please note you. Don't your, need to prove that. Oh, Eduji, please, Eduji please, note please, your reservation. Please, please, please. please. Eduji, I'm, allow I'm, of course. Go ahead. Eduji, note your I'm reservation. I'm asking you whether these were the so, findings of the commission. So, Bobo, his, Obviously not. Bobo, his UK counterpart had made COVID rules, and he went out of his way to break them by kissing a lady, <laughs> and he resigned. I'm not aware. Of I'm coming. So what it, you are it, it's on BBC. So it's on BBC. It's, it's public. Well, it's public I, am I supposed to be aware of everything now, that happens? Now, somebody on told me yesterday that here's <laughs> here's a health minister <laughs> who who contracts. <laughs> who, here's a health minister. Who contracts you COVID nineteen? I, I haven't seen the kissing. It's okay. So the BBC reported it. My here's oh, a health okay. minister I'm not who, aware. who contracts COVID. I mean, and he was talking about stop the stigma, and he couldn't disclose his COVID nineteen status. He told us he was resting at the University of Ghana Medical Center. It took the president to address the nation to but say I, I don't the know minister you, lied. I'm coming. I'm coming. Are, I'm coming. Belaboring this point. You made it earlier. I'm coming. And, and I was surprised I, I'm, because I'm, you ask, see? I'm asking a question. Can I can I finish my question? Please, please finish. Thank you. Now, the word on the street is that the minister has misconducted himself, is giving the government a bad name or a bad image, and that he should go. If the president is not sacking him, should he resign himself? course he has to take the decision but this example that you cited with respect to he saying that he's resting why how do you know that at the time that <laughs> he indicated he was resting he didn't know he had COVID how do you know I had COVID did, did I you, didn't know did you did, you, went, did on, you see his on, Facebook hold on, page hold on hold on hold on hold on I okay. had COVID okay I didn't know until I did a test right because I was feeling unwell okay and so i retired to bed the next day i drove into accra called the doctor and he told me that go and check for COVID. i did so how do you know that in the intervening period between the time that the minister was feeling unwell and had gone mm. to rest mm. and the time that he did the interview mm. actually did not know that he had COVID. how do you know the university of ghana medical center is now a resting place oh but if you are not well and your doctor tells you that you need bed rest why well, it, it doesn't happen and you rest at the university of ghana ah, but of course Bobo, is it not possible? Do you rest? No, I'm asking. You make it sound as if it is an impossibility. You That's rest, difficult to you rest at the medical center. Why not? I see. Bella, enough of your you rest. You cannot be read, observed. Read the message for me. Whilst your test is being... <laughs> Bella, say, Bella says <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking for an idea because to rest. Yeah, you're going to rest at the medical center. Yeah. I want, to, I want to be a rest at the Bank of Ghana hospital. Oh, you can you can go there today. I see. Oh, so anybody can walk in and just... Yeah. But if you're unwell and I, you go to the hospital and... I, I know doctor, they're resting, please. It's a privilege, right? <laughs> oh. Anyway, let's go, guys. Musa Abato and Kumasi says, Good morning, Johnny. I'm pleading with the general public that we must, as a matter of urgency, step out to pray for Ghana because we are in a state of collapse at the rate at which government is borrowing to service debts and, and um, well, well, the pandemic and corruption in the system, it is uncontrollable. Why is the health minister still at post after so many infractions have been detected in the procurement of COVAX vaccine? Um, corruption has become a social intervention. God save our homeland, Ghana, New Day. You mean the Sputnik? Okay. Well, Charlotte Osei is out of office because of procurement breaches. So why is President Ekufuado still keeping the health minister, Mr. Juman Menu, at post after breaching procurement laws of our beloved country? Are we not equal before the loss of Ghana? The future is pregnant indeed. That's from Prince Henry from Koforidia. Why is the health minister, Juman Menu, still at post and not being prosecuted by the MPP government under Nanado Dankwe Kufuado? Because other Ghanaians are in jail for breaking procurement processes without benefiting financially. Akufuado can never fight corruption. Rather, corruption is fighting him. If you chop the hands of a monkey, watch your Stephen from Kwabenya. From positive change in Medina, Kras says this government is infected with corruption, greed and wickedness. How can a serious president who claimed to be fighting corruption be keeping a disastrous health minister at post after causing, a financial, uh, after causing financial loss to the state? Walanyo Anakotia says the amount fully paid to the Sputnik V vaccines company uh, be refunded so that we die of COVID-19. Are we not doing give a dog a bad name and hang it? This is too harsh to treat health minister uh okay who's serving the nation wholeheartedly i see well we have not received some of the vaccines that have already been paid for and that contract has been terminated and so 
what happens to that money? And that is why, um, you know, the finance ministry is being asked to retrieve that amount. But Jagos from in Salam says, we're still pleading with UTAC to go back to the classroom and teach the students. But again, I'm urging the government to find a better way of resolving this problem with the university teachers before this problem gets out of hand. We're told there's a crunch meeting happening today with the UTAC leaders. Let's see what comes out of it. Good morning, Johnny. The case of the new school in the Volta region that has not been open for children to learn is rather unfortunate. Okay, um... But what you and your panel members fail to question is whether the contractor has been fully paid or not. No contractor will complete a job and not present a certificate for payment. There's more to it than we know. So find out from the contractor. That's Issa Haku from Tamale. Good morning. You know the politicians know we talk too much. Oh, you know the politicians know we talk too much without acting, so they always play on our intelligence. This minister has really failed and disappointed me, especially with his response. All the old men in this government need to resign or be forced to leave, I think even the president. One, how far is the bribery issue leveled against the law holder of the land? Okay. How far is the Lolobi constituency, Buhaha? And three, why 2020 past questions, Buhaha? How far? We thought that government led by Nanado will do especially well uh, because Nana is matured and experienced, but he's failed me. I laughed when he said MPP will win in 2024. Not even NDC will. I pray so. This nonsense must stop. That's it for our messages this morning, Johnny. Okay. Thank you very much, Bella. Uh, Council, take your, your two minutes and then... Uh, no, it's okay. You, you are in opposition, so... Okay. So, <laughs> let me just put it this way. Let the record be set mm -hmm. that in relation to this Sputnik matter, mm -hmm. there was an offside LC. And it was in the contract signed by the minister. Letters of credit. So, so which open indicates... Open when payment ought to be effected. And as I said, uh, that's uh, 31st March 2021, mm -hmm. when payment was effected, the minister was in the know. So this attempt to suggest that the minister did not know mm -hmm. when he appeared before the parliamentary uh, committee, committee is complete afterthought and should not be entertained. <laughs> Two, I have nothing personal against the minister. But I am saying that relative to the conduct of the MPP government mm -hmm. led, by, led by President Akufado in prosecuting mm -hmm. and is still prosecuted former government appointees on alleged breaches of the Public Procurement Act, mm -hmm. the president ought to demonstrate that when it comes to prosecution, he has not weaponized Article 88 against his political opponent, and that he will be even in the application of the criminal laws of this country. So far, his conduct has always been mm -hmm. to shield his appointees found to have breached the Public Procurement Act. You remember famously, the National Youth Authority, mm -hmm. where they signed contract with PREFORS, right. with that PPA approval, among other infractions of the Public Procurement Act. Look, in God's name, how could Minister Kenoforiata, the Ministry of Finance, even pay without cross-sectorial? Is it not the same government mm -hmm. that is prosecuting the chief director? Mm -hmm. Because the minister said payment was done without his knowledge. I mean, so in one breath, we are using one set of facts against certain individuals. In another breath, the same set of facts, we say no. Empathy. But this was not a criminal prosecution or trial. This, this was no, no, no. A, I am a not saying. I am saying probe. that the Attorney General, as of 12th of April, okay. wrote a legal opinion on this transaction. In that legal opinion, the AG himself found out that the 12th of March 2021 mm -hmm. contract minister signed had problems. And that Attorney General legal opinion was before the committee. But, but why didn't the minister contact the Attorney General to seek his advice before moving on? Exactly. That is the recklessness. That is how you infer the recklessness. And the appraisal uh, the, of decisions. There, there's no Attorney General's rep at the Health Ministry. Is there? Of course there no, is. No, there is. There is none. You see, Sina, <laughs> relax. Sina, relax. Look, look the committee. All the ministries. See, see, see the committee. State attendees no, working senior, senior. in there. Okay. Senior, this is That's the committee. That's a matter of fact. No, see, this is the committee's own report. Right. There were two contracts. Okay. SL Global mm. and then the Sheikh Muktoum contract. Yeah. In the case of SL Global, they actually said that the reason why they never saw the Attorney General's opinion is that they were already 
seeking one in respect of the sheikh's one. There is no such thing. And that was why in this case, they actually went back after he signed the contract, mm. before now going to the attorney general to seek his opinion. The opinion from the AG was received on the 12th day of April, by which time he had already signed the contract. These are the facts, okay. undisputed. So, having conducted yourself in this manner, mm. it lies not in the mouth of anybody. Mm. If Brother Akufado wants us to take him serious mm. in this fight against corruption, he should do the need for. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Grateful for your time uh, this morning as you uh, contributed heavily to the program. We're grateful. Now, um, uh, Ambassador Sampiali says, Johnny, it's interesting to be a Ghanaian these days. In what context is Oponi being prosecuted for causing financial loss? In what context is Collins Doubt, etc., being prosecuted for causing financial loss to the state? Confronted with a case of life and death, a young poor boy steals in the market and is jailed. In Ghana, even the director of the procurement authority set up a company to siphon government contracts and it's normal. That's a contracts for sale. In Ghana, the government accuses people of defrauding the state in the PDS saga and it's normal that the individuals go marching on. We appoint officers to defend the country, they fail to defend the country and we are mocked and cause uh, it's normal. Uh, that's, that's being candid in admitting wrong doing uh, that that's being candid and admitting wrong absorb the person from being convicted my brother uh ajapa be advised that you owe you now you are now a deputy minister so this is for you it says my young brother ajapa be advised that you are now a deputy minister of state so your oath of office and allegiance is to the state and not to the interest of individuals and your party Unyimpani, uh, okay uh, the, the, the tongue doesn't rot. Uh, Johnny. Johnny. So so then he comes back. So, 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 Hold on. You, you, let, let me. You, you read. You read. The, let me. Let me finish. Let me finish. Brothers, let me finish. Part of Edugi's contribution. Let me finish. <laughs> no, he says. I'm, I'm wrapping up. He says. So if a Japa, uh, accepts that in a ministry, a minister may not be aware of payments and documentation. So what is Atacha saying that his chief director made payments in the Saglemi uh, case? And uh, John says, uh, boss, kindly prompt a Japa that all criminals, that is armed robbers, etc., have very legitimate uh, reasons for committing their acts. Is he saying that they should be left off the hook? The health minister messed up big time. He should do the honorable thing. On this side, USA took over 100 athletes with 14 officials to the Olympics and topped the medal table. Ghana took 14 athletes with 30 officials and ended up last. Food for thought. Good morning, my brother. Final one says, uh, Johnny, in fact, some of these politicians are very dangerous to the system. In other jurisdictions, nobody will be asking this minister to resign, but he would have done the honorable thing. Good morning to you, Johnny. Thank you very much for your messages and also uh, for sharing uh, with us your thoughts and comments. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, Andrew Ejapa Mesa Always is a, uh, a member of parliament for the second D constituency. He's also a deputy minister for health of the republic yeah, and please. lawyer Eduji uh, Tamakuro is... I don't even know how uh, to hold this. Uh, deputy, <laughs> deputy minister of energy, I beg your pardon. Well, uh, minister for health is an accountant. <laughs> so anything is possible in this republic. Yeah. Uh, Eduji Tamakuro is a private legal yeah, so practitioner and um, yeah, when you go to aspiring COVID. <laughs>